So I've had this setup in the studio ever since I got the new Mac mini. It's super clean, super minimal, just the essentials, only stuff that I really need. And I've been using this monitor and I think this is the best budget monitor for the new M4 Mac mini. It's 27 inches, 4K, 10 bit IPS, and comes in under $200. This is the MSI MD27 One UL. Apart from that really long name, it's actually quite a good value for $200. It's 27 inches, which in my opinion is the sweet spot for single monitor productivity setups. The 4K resolution gives you four times the screen real estate versus a 1080p monitor, 16 by nine aspect ratio, and it's actually really color accurate. 139% sRGB, 95% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3. So if you're doing color sensitive work like graphics design, video editing, photo editing, it's actually gonna give you really accurate representation of the content and it's also really bright. 400 nits of peak brightness and in a well-lit environment like my studio, I have a window right beside me. I personally have had no issues. It's got really good visibility and it's also an anti-glare panel, so there's not a lot of reflection and it's got a really nice stand. It's made out of aluminum, really good quality, dense, keeps the monitor stable goes really well with the whole Mac aesthetic with that color. Unfortunately, it does not have a lot of adjustments. The only adjustment you have here is tilt, so you can go from five degrees to 30 degrees, and that's pretty much it. So no height and no pivot adjustment. And this monitor also does not have phaser compatibility, which can be a deal breaker for a lot of people. You cannot mount this to the wall. You cannot use it with a monitor arm. But if you can live with that, it's actually a really nice stand. Now, in terms of ports, you've got two HDMI 2.0s, one DisplayPort 1.2, and a USB-C port. Yes, you can use that for display output as well, and it also has 65 watts of power delivery. Now, that's gonna be fine for MacBook Air, but with some of the newer MacBook Pros, you are gonna need more power, so you have to connect your power adapter, but that's not really a big deal breaker. There's also a headphone jack, and overall, I like this monitor. It's got thin bezels, it does not have any you know, fancy branding that's gonna get in the way of your you know, setup's aesthetic. It is made out of plastic, so it's not fancy pants like the Apple Studio display, but this is going for $200. And in the market right now, I don't think you can find anything like this for that price. Now, talking about some affordable storage, I got the M4 Pro Mac Mini with 512 gigs of storage for $1,400. Now, if I wanted to upgrade that, to a terabyte, Apple would charge me another $200, which is insane. And I found this crucial X6 portable SSD, which is one terabyte, on Amazon for $63. And the two TB version is available for $99, which is just a steal in my opinion. Now, this is not the fastest drive on the market. This clocks in right around 700 megabytes per second, read and write. It's completely made out of plastic but it's a very stable drive in my opinion. Does not heat up, stays consistent with the speed. And for my personal workflow, where I'm editing 1080p and 4K videos, I can comfortably edit from this drive without any issues. And my workflow has not had any issues with this drive. And for most people, this is gonna be fine. Now, if you require faster drives, you can get the Samsungs or the Sabrins of the world. But for $63, I can't really complain. And I'm gonna leave a link to this drive in the description down below. It works with USB-C, comes with a really short cable. Again, really good, affordable value storage. Now, if you are a Mac user with a non-Apple display, here's how you can change your monitor's brightness right from your menu bar. So it's an app called Monitor Control Lite, which is free, available on the App Store, and it lets you change your monitor's brightness very easily. And you can do it from the menu bar or you can assign keyboard shortcuts for brightness up and down. I'm gonna link this app, it's in the description down below. Now for the keyboard and mouse, I'm using the Logitech MX Keys S keyboard and the MX Master 3S mouse, both in graphite. This keyboard is actually the total opposite of what I have been using for the last four or five years, which is mechanical keyboards. They're clacky, they have you know really nice switches. This is the total opposite. This is a membrane keyboard with scissor switches. Very similar tech to Apple's Magic Keyboard, but it's got these spherically dished keys which fit the you know, shape of your fingers naturally really well, so very comfortable to type on. There's you know, adequate spacing between the keys, good travel, decent feedback, nothing close to the mechanical keyboards which I've used, but this is very comfortable. I can type on this for hours and still not feel fatigued. It's also got really nice extra features like this function row, which gives you access to your quick shortcuts, like brightness up and down, 
you know, backlight up, backlight down. There is backlight on this keyboard. So if you work in the night or if you work in a dark environment, this can light up the keyboard so you can see the keys clearly. It's also got a dedicated emoji button. You can mute your microphone. It's also got this quick switch feature, which can connect this keyboard to three devices at the same time, and you can switch between them simultaneously. So let's say you have a MacBook, the Mac mini, and an iPad. You can switch between all of them and continue to use this keyboard. There's also shortcuts for a calculator. There is a lookup shortcut, screenshot, and you can you know bring up the lock screen as well. Again, if you want a comfortable keyboard, you're gonna be typing on for really long hours. This is really good. It is gonna last you a long time. 10 days with the backlight on and five months with the backlight off. It charges via USB-C. It is on the pricier side at $110, but it's an investment. This can last you four to five years easily and I think it's totally worth it. Now for the mouse, I'm using the MX Master 3S. It's goated in the tech community for good reason. It's got a very ergonomic shape, very comfortable to use again, fits my hand really well. I can use this for five, six hours and still not feel fatigued. It's got silent clicks. So if you're working beside a bunch of people, they're not gonna be disturbed. And it's also got this max speed scroll wheel, which can scroll 1000 lines in one second. So if you're scrolling through huge Excel sheets or documents, this is gonna be useful. You've got a horizontal scroll wheel, which makes video editing very easy since you can you know, scroll through your timeline so it can speed up your workflow there. It's got a gesture button or gesture button, which can be customized. I've set it to launch pad. That's what I need it for. There's also a back and forward button. The mouse also has the quick switch feature so it can connect to three devices and you can switch between them simultaneously. This has also got a 70 day battery life, which is really nice. I barely charge this and when I need to, the USB-C port is right here, unlike Apple's dumb design where you have to you know, plug it in the bottom. You can keep using this while it's charging. And both the keyboard and mouse can be customized in the Logi Options Plus software. So you can remap the keys, create custom shortcuts. You can make smart actions with this keyboard and with the mouse as well. There's a bunch of customization inside the Logi Options Plus app. It is there to enhance the experience. The mouse is gonna cost you $100. Now there is a combo available for the Mac with a wrist rest for $185. And if you want the one with the receiver, you're gonna pay $200. It's an investment, as I said, will last you a long time. And I personally really, you know, like this keyboard and I totally recommend it. Another thing that I wanted to recommend is a Thunderbolt dock. The M4 Mac mini does not have any USB-A ports and it does not have a SD card reader. This solves both of those problems. This is a Thunderbolt 3 dock from OWC. It's old, but Thunderbolt is backwards compatible. So three is compatible with four and five and vice versa. So this can give you a bunch of ports like the specific model I have here comes with micro SD, SD card reader, headphone jack, USB-A, USB-C, four USB-A's on the back, all full speed, optical audio, ethernet, more USB-C, display port and power in. This is a really good investment if you have a bunch of accessories like external hard drives, microphones, audio interfaces, and you want to connect all of them to your Mac, this can you know keep them connected. And this comes with its own power adapter. The OWC one I have here comes with a 180 watt power adapter. So all the ports are working at full speed, unlike those cheap dogs in the market that are not powered by anything. And one cable is basically carrying all the data. So if you connect a bunch of you know things to those cheap dongles, they become really slow. So I'm gonna leave a really nice Thunderbolt 4 dock for you guys to you know buy, which I think is good value. So check the links in the description down below. And that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. You let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this setup. What is your current setup? I'm really curious to know. I'll be there in the comment section replying to you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.